here we are again. This is Brad. How you doing? A lot of you know me, some of you don't. Look up sharpensbest.com. You can go to YouTube, Sharpens Best, and, uh, you know, just kind of look and, and see what we're all about, what we do. Uh, I think we've been doing YouTube videos now in the neighborhood of four years, four and a half years. And uh, I just see that we're over six million views. We got 31,000 subscribers and I think 2,700, 2,780. 80 uh, videos, something like that. We've got a lot of videos. So anyway, um, we were contacted by Jeremiah Moore, and he's from down in Missouri, and it's called Essential Goods. And uh, we'll just let you, you know, look at uh, the address here. And uh, so anyway, you know, just when it, when it comes up, freeze, pew, write it down. Uh, Jeremy sells knives online, and um, so he's seen our videos, and I'm, you know, viewing some knives, things like that. And he uh, sent us a couple messages, you know, hey, would you accept, uh, pick a knife off of my website, and I'll mail it to you free of charge, and thank you. And by the way, Jeremy Moore, we do have it now. We do, we got it a while ago, but it takes a little bit for Brad to come back to town so we can do this stuff. And I'm here in Denver working on it now. So let's go ahead and, and uh, open it up and take a look and see what we got. Uh, my... Uh, video guy, those things are tight, um, uh, is the one that did all the correspondence here, and so I don't really know exactly what's in here. Um, so let's open it up and take a look, see what we got from Jeremy Moore. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I'm He's sorry. For all. Yeah, Jer Jeremiah Johnson. I actually just seen that movie again. That's been out, I don't know, 35 years. Uh, Robert Redford, and that's uh, a pretty cool movie. And let's see what we got here from Mr. Jeremiah Moore. Ooh. Okay, and I'm just going to uh, let you focus in on this. Okay, now you know who it is, where they're from, what their email address is, and um, there's no phone number. So, you know, get a hold of Jeremiah Moore with his website and his uh, email and buy some goods from him. And I haven't actually seen his website yet, um, but it's probably a pretty good deal. Uh, okay, you do have a, a spring on the back here for putting it on your pants, your belt, your pocket, things like that. You've got a, a large uh, sheath. Um, you've got the rounded hole here that actually snaps in there pretty good. Ooh, that's wow. a pretty one. Okay, so we'll just hold still and uh, let you look at it. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, it does have a carabiner on the back here, so you can hook this uh, onto your pack. Wow. Okay. He that says is not, it snaps in really good. That is not going to just fall out of there. You know, see, so you could hook that on your backpack and stuff. You could hook it on your belt loop. Um, you know, that might be a fairly good deal. Take the uh, leg uh, strap off of it here and uh, clip this on your, your belt loop. Uh, it does have some lacing uh, holes and stuff up in there, so you could, you know, tie it on, whatever. So, let's see. Uh, this is going to be a fun one to sharpen because I see, uh, you know, you have your inside radius, then you have the point, and then you have, a, you know, it's all round all the way out. You have an outside radius all the way out to the point of the knife. And this, you know, I don't know, that's the, maybe for uh, just roughing stuff up. It's not... Uh, serrated edge you, you couldn't cut anything with that but if you need to take the bark off of something you could probably take it like and that's actually kind of sharp so you, you could take it and and rip like this to get the bark off or to score uh, something to mark something to uh, maybe you're gonna you got a piece of sandstone and, and you want to work on the sandstone uh, for an arrowhead or something a spearhead and so you would just take it and do this and then uh, that would give you a line in the uh, sandstone that you could actually put some string, some twine, some uh, paracord or something like that so you could lash it down to a spearhead or something. Uh, it does have, this works for a thumb guard up here uh, like that and your finger does kind of fit down in this hole. It's got a, I believe that's a bottle opener uh, that you could, you know, open your bottles with. Um, it, it's curved forwards, okay. That's kind of cool. It's a pretty color. Um, it's got a plastic handle on it here. Uh, it's got two screws. It's probably fairly substantial. It is made in China, and it does come... Uh, that, that bites pretty good. 
Okay, so let's see. Um, let's see, uh, I guess we can uh, slice some paper here. Um, huh, carnage, okay. Sports Illustrated. Um, you know, they've got, <laughs> they've got a picture of, of the injured uh, players and, you know, other stuff that's going on. I didn't read any of it. I don't know what it's all about. But I, inside the NFL season of pain, uh, you know, and will the NFL even be around? I've, I've got a friend that's heavily into the NFL and everything, and she asked me about the NFL, and I said, you know, to tell you the truth, I would, I would bet money. I really would. I would bet money that within a year, year and a half, the NFL doesn't exist anymore. Um, why? Okay, I maybe shouldn't get into this, but uh, the one world government and the one world people are going to remake the world. You can't remake the world when you have one organization. I'm just going to throw a figure. I don't even watch football. Don't care. Uh, I, I don't have any idea how many teams there are or anything else. But I'm just I'm just going to throw a figure out there. Annually, the NFL probably does, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 60, 70 billion dollars. Okay, when you have a force to be reckoned with, all the politicians, all the multi-billionaires around the world, the Bill Gateses of the world, um, people that are multi, multi, multi-billionaires that bought the teams, okay, you got to have billions of dollars to buy an NFL team. So you're actually working with the people around the world who make the world. So to remake the world, you have to destroy their business. You got to destroy them. You got to destroy their income. Anyway, we'll leave it alone at that. But I'm just thinking a year, year and a half, you probably won't see the NFL. Or you're going to see something that's like the NFL, but the NFL got taken away and made into something else they can control. All right, let's look and see. So much for these poor guys here. Sorry, guys, but you're going to get cut up. And uh, this is really thin uh, paper, so. That's good because you can't cheat, all right? And, and that's actually, it went through to start with pretty good until you get to this uh, point right there and then of course it stops. So let's see, okay, that's actually pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with the uh, sharpening and then on the, oh my God, that is sharp, that's smooth. Um, Factory edge knives, if you look at them under a 1600 power microscope like I have, a friend of mine's got a, uh, uh, he's a veterinarian, and I go into his clinic and I use his microscopes, and I look at the cutting edge, and they are very, very sharp, okay, you know, right out to the cutting edge, but part of what makes these knives so incredibly sharp is the fact that the very utmost of the cutting edge is more like a saw. It's, it's microscopically thin, and it's also like a saw, because all knives are ground 90 degrees to the blade. So you've got a big belt sander, you take the knife, you come up to it, it's got a backing, the belt sander's moving this direction. You take the knife, you come in, and then you just do that once, and then you come in, and you do it again. All right, and then they may buff them, uh, and some stuff like that. They may wire wheel them, or excuse me, paper wheel them. This one doesn't appear uh, on the finish uh, that they've done anything else to it, but it's, it's impossible to get a fin uh, uh, the end results on the cutting edge like the factory did it start with. So let's do this here, and I don't know, let's uh, slice an apple, and that's pretty darn good. And I say pretty darn good too because the knife is actually pretty thick, so when you start slicing something, the cutting edge, okay, how well it actually slices doesn't all depend on the cutting edge. The knife gets thicker and thicker. So if you cut little thin slices, okay, that'll actually flex easier like that. But if you used to cut the apple in half, you actually have to force the two halves apart. The cutting edge is doing its job, but the thickness of, of the knife has to spread that apple like that, so it makes it a little bit tougher. Okay, and so now let's uh, see. Okay. That's, that's pretty sharp. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's see. Um, the long handle, knife sharpener. I, my name, yeah, is on that side and my phone number. On this side is the company sharpensbest.com. Go to sharpensbest.com. That's where you're going to pick up your long handle sharpeners. And this is uh, along the lines of the original design. 
Okay. Inside radius, outside radius. Both of them are very difficult to sharpen. This isn't as hard to sharpen with a whetstone as, as your inside radius is. This is nearly impossible without using some kind of rat tail file, some diamond impregnated uh, file, some round object. Okay. Your uh, outside radius, you can actually take it and go along kind of easy like this. Inside radius, not. So if we just do this and slide that right through there like this, and I watch the cutting edge, I watch the shine. See, I don't even know that there is an inside radius on that knife. It's so easy for me to sharpen. I don't press very hard. I'm at a little bit of an angle. I'll turn it this way, and I just slide it back, tip it up a little bit, and go right on around. Turn it a little bit, put, put it on my knee a little bit different, just like this, go right on around. Right off the tip, just like that. Turn it over. I am disturbing the factory cut uh, on the blade because they grind it 90 degrees to the blade. I am actually taking the little 90 degree serrations off, not so much deliberately because I want them off, uh, but you can't sharpen the way I'm sharpening and leave the little tiny serrations on there. Just like with a whetstone or anything else that you use other than a belt sander, you can't leave the original grind on there with anything that you sharpen with. So now I'm just touching it, just pestering it, real light. Take that little tiny wire edge off there, real light, just like this. Touch it real light. Okay, now let's see what we got. Oh, <laughs> that's that went a little deep, but. That's also very sharp, and the deeper you go, the harder it is to cut. You want apple? Don't you spit that out. All right, let's see on these thin slices. That's so smooth. That is so smooth. That's what pant legs were put on man for. All right, now let's see. Oop. <laughs> that paper is so thin. All right, there you go. That's sharp. Now, to make sure that you don't dull the knife, here's what I find a lot of people do, and they get impatient. They know where the cutting edge is. The cutting edge is the most furthest part out. So, they're not patient. They tip the sharpener up trying to get to the cutting edge because they just don't want to wait, put it down correctly, and sharpen the knife. What they really do is they create such a sharp angle on there, they might be clear up 25 degrees, 30 degrees. So if you do that on both sides, 30 degrees one side, inclusive, you got a 60 degree angle, the knife will never cut anything. You'd have to pound it through an apple. Okay, so put it on about a 12 degree bevel and brush the blade. Be patient. Do not lift it up like this trying to get to the cutting edge. That's just going to create a problem for you, so don't do that. Just like this. And then flip it over. Match the bevel that the factory put on it, or tip it down just a little bit and uh, make your 12 degree bevel out of it. So let's see. That's sharp. And then your paper and stuff. So, um, as far as the knife goes, I haven't used it on anything hard. Um, I think it's made pretty good, it's made out of stainless steel. Um, you know, it's got a, a probably pretty tough plastic handle, two good screws in it. It's got the carabiner on there. Uh, it's pretty good looking, you know, the way they've got the design on there. And it sharpened up nicely. So, Jeremy Moore, Essential Goods LLC. Oh, Jeremiah. Or Jeremiah. i got to get that down. <clears throat> Jeremiah. Okay. And uh, so, you already seen his website and stuff on the card. I'll give you one more quick look at that. That's where to go. Check out his website. Patronize the man. This is Brad. Take care. Have a good day.